Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Tuesday, June 11th, 2024, and today we had a very interesting special election. A special election that, to be very frank with you, I did not believe I was going to cover because of the results that I expected to see in the Ohio 6th Congressional District. Now, the special election has certainly shocked everybody. The result here shows the Republican nominee for Congress here winning by just nine percentage points in a congressional district that brace yourself, in 2022, voted for the Republican nominee by 36 percentage points. A huge overperformance for the Democratic Party, a huge underperformance for the Republican Party, and an all-around shift in narrative and change in direction from what everybody in the media has been predicting about this election. And special elections are ones that I think are very interesting to look at very close to an election because they often predict just exactly what we can expect to see that coming November. And the special election just four to five months out from a general election in which Democrats are experiencing a 15, 20, 25 point advantage compared to their previous margin just goes to show exactly how much Democrats have come in terms of overall performance despite what the media might be saying. And I think this also came at nearly perfect timing when we take a look at the brand new 538 forecast that was released today. Now, I'll be covering this in tomorrow's video as it settles in a little bit into uh, our mainstream conversation here. But President Biden actually was announced today as the favorite to win the 2024 presidential election, according to the 538 forecast. And more on that later. But generally speaking, numbers like the ones we're seeing out of Ohio actually suggest that Democrats are on a pathway to victory rather than Republicans dominating as others might have you believe. Now, the Ohio 6th District results here, I think, are a continuation of what we have seen in the special elections in 2024 alone. When you take a look at what we've seen in the most recent election, uh, going back to New York's, uh, I believe actually, New York's 26th district, it was a special election, it wasn't super competitive, Tim Kennedy was running here a very strong Democratic seat, but we found that Democrats saw an overperformance in terms of margin. Because in 2022, this exact congressional district, if we actually take a look at the state of New York on the House level, this congressional district went to the Democratic Party, if we find it here, uh, I believe New York... Uh, if we get over to the right election, sorry about this, the 26th district here, the Democrats won by 28 points. And so when you look at 2024 and you say, okay, Democrats obviously won by a very strong margin, but this was over 30 points. To be exact, you're talking roughly 36 to 37 points in terms of the margin of victory. And so an overperformance here was a small but steady indicator that Democrats were having consistent overperformances. In a very similar way we had seen in previous elections where Democrats ultimately came out on top that coming November. But the real special election that I think really struck many people to their core was the third district special election in the state of New York when Tom Swasey returned to run for his previous district, and this was George Santos's district. In 2022, the Republicans won here by nearly 10 points. And so just a year later, practically speaking, Tom Swasey was able to run in this race and defeat his Republican opponent, who was not associated with George Santos, who was a very different type of nominee and arguably one that Republicans felt very confident about by a margin of eight points. And so now again, in a continuation of what we have seen in the consistency in these special elections, an overperformance in the third district, a shift and a swing of 20 points. In the 26th district, a swing of 10 points. In the uh, Ohio 6th district now, a swing of 20 points. I mean, you are talking about significant swings in favor of the Democratic Party's direction. And this special election only continues to reaffirm that. Now, I often think about the 2022 special elections because they often provided, and I say the word often a lot, so I apologize for that, but they provided us a bit more context about what we could expect in the 2022 midterms. Now, if you think back to those midterm elections, the entire mainstream narrative was that Republicans were easily going to win House control. And the Senate was leaning in their favor, but still largely up for grabs. What we actually found was that the House was largely up for grabs and that Democrats were slated to easily win and maintain Senate control. But it was nothing about the generic ballot that was indicating that that would be the case. President Biden's approval ratings were pretty low. The generic ballot had Republicans ahead. And the overall estimation, just based on history and based on vibes about the economy, vibes about health care, vibes about immigration, was that President Biden and the Democratic Party were going to suffer major losses. But here's what stuck out to me. 
And here's what we covered when we took a look at some of those important elections that happened leading up to that November. The special elections predicted something a little bit different. In the first special election after the Dobbs decision, we saw that Mike Flood, now the incumbent representative from Nebraska's first district here, won by just roughly five points in a congressional district that Trump won by double digits. When you take a look at Nebraska's first district, this district is overwhelmingly conservative. In 2024, it will likely vote for Donald Trump by over 20 points. And so to see it in 2022 narrowed down to five points was the first alarm bell that was raised for Republicans in 2022. That the high propensity voters here that used to be very solidly conservative and very arguably much more inspired to vote red, and a lot of voters here who are now high propensity Democratic voters simply didn't vote at the same level, they are now turning blue. These voters are now becoming more and more Democratic. So Republicans should have been worried from the start. But it wasn't just this special election. Then came the Minnesota 1st District here, another district that Trump had won by 11 points in 2020. After redistricting, they did the evaluations. Trump won by double digits. Republicans won here by just four. Nebraska, Minnesota, special election after special election showing a consistent Democratic overperformance. But then came the big one. The big one, I mean literally, in the biggest state in the union came, we saw in the state of Alaska, when we saw that Mary Peltola ended up winning in her special election. Now that was super significant because it meant that we had seen the first flip across the country. The first flip that Democrats had in these House elections. And on one end, everybody was writing it off. It made no sense that Democrats were winning here and it was just because Sarah Palin was on the ballot. But it became a consistent thing that allowed Democrats to show that, you know what, this was a race here that was meant to be winnable. This was a race that shows that Democrats do have the opportunity to do well in a year that was supposed to be a red wave. It was reaffirmed again when it came down to New York's 19th, reaffirmed again when it came down to New York's 23rd, narrowing up Democratic holds, all of these things, all of it was good news for Democrats. And so now we're starting to see a very similar trend happen again in 2024. Whether it's in New York or whether it's in Ohio, the results are clear. The Democratic Party has seen a major overperformance, a major overperformance in special election after special election after special election across the country, which stands in direct defiance with what we are told about this election, that Republicans are inspired to vote and Democrats are not that Trump voters are inspired to vote and Democrats are not. Well, let's take a look at the numbers when it comes down to a specific county. That in 2020, uh, 2020 Harrison County here, engulfed by Ohio's 6th District, President Trump won here by 53 points. Now, here's the problem. When you take a look at Harrison County in 2022, you find here that the Republican nominee won by roughly 28. You are talking about a county that voted for Donald Trump by 53 points. And it isn't necessarily that all of these Republicans are somehow now voting for Democrats. It's about who is turning out, who is inspired to get to that ballot box. Evidently, it's not Donald Trump's base, which means it's not Republicans. The Republican here got just 12% of Donald Trump's 2020 vote total. The Democrat, however, got 22% of Biden's 2020 vote total. When it comes down to enthusiasm, and when it comes down to voter turnout, what we have known historically is that higher voter turnout in high propensity elections, meaning those who pay the most attention, those who have the most free time, those who are the most privileged to be able to be so aware of all of these elections going on. That is a reality in American politics that historically has benefited the Republican Party. That when Democrats don't pay attention, and the highest turnout voters are the ones that are older, whiter. You know, you are talking about a demographic group that Republicans traditionally do very well in. Democrats are now tapping into that. And they're changing what it means to be a high propensity voter. And that it doesn't just engulf into, you know, realms of it meaning older or meaning whiter voters. And that it now means minority voters. It means women who feel very angry about the abortion decision, Dobbs v. Jackson, that are still turning out to vote in every election possible. You are finding that Democrats are reworking what it means to be a high propensity voter, and it benefits them in election after election. Because in the special elections in 2022, 
That was the real sign that Republicans, in fact, were not going to have a red wave. And yet we ignored that to listen to what we saw on the national level. We listened to the generic ballot instead of listening to what we saw in the actual elections. In the Senate races, too, we did a whole lot of listening to polls as well. The 538 forecast, in fact, said Republicans were easily going to win the House. Did not happen. Easily going to win the Senate based on percentages. Hillary Clinton had the same percentage at winning the presidency in 2016 that Republicans had at winning the Senate in 2022, according to 538, to put those things into perspective. And so for Democrats to not only maintain Senate control, but actually expand a seat here, meant that we missed something entirely. Because the polls promised us Herschel Walker was ahead in Georgia. Dr. Oz was ahead in Pennsylvania. Blake Masters was ahead in Arizona. Adam Laxalt was ahead in Nevada. We were promised Republicans were going to easily win both chambers of Congress. The House more than the Senate, but easily win them. But what told us that wasn't going to happen was these special elections, the real results, the real voters out there that were saying and waving a very big purple flag that was saying, we may not be entirely with the Democratic Party. These weren't overperformances akin to what we saw in 2018, but they were overperformances. They did reveal something about this election that said, maybe this isn't as Republican as we are thinking. And just in the same way that I think many of us feel vindicated in this result here that shows Biden ahead in the 538 forecast, I genuinely believe there is reason to say that Biden is ahead nationally, and it's because we can't just listen to what the polls are suggesting. There are plenty of fundamentals out there, including these special election results that tell us that Democrats are doing a lot better than what people would have you believe. And this election, I think, affirming that only confirms exactly what we've been talking about for some time. And so I think Democrats are going to take away from this, that they still have the energy. They still have that going for them. They still have their base. Democrats haven't lost this when it comes down to these congressional elections. And the question will be, does President Biden see this translating over into his election? Does President Biden see this translating over into somehow, you know, him doing better in Ohio's 6th District than they did in 2020? Because while it likely will revert very heavily back in favor of the GOP come the regular election, should the same candidates run for this seat in 2024 in the November election, we will likely have a much more lopsided result in favor of Republicans. But we cannot ignore this enthusiasm gap that is being revealed to us so early on. Again, we have been told this tale, and in many cases, leaned into it and believed it, because it makes a lot of sense when you take a look at some of these polls. And while it may be accurate for the presidential, because again, we will never be able to actually test that into election day, special elections are not presidential elections, but they are congressional ones. And so when we see here that Democrats are doing a lot better and seeing results very similar to 2022, we could see a result, again, similar to 2022, in the sense that Democrats are able to win in these battleground states, but lose on the national level. That could be our reality. And while it may seem so unlikely compared to what we saw in 2020, when President Biden won the national popular vote, when President Biden won the Electoral College, and everything made sense again. Biden was winning in these regions, it was driving up his popular vote share, losing support in some core constituencies in New York and California, but still winning nationwide. A lot of things about 2020 actually did make a lot of sense in terms of the results that we saw. A shift in the suburbs in Atlanta, combined with the highest turnout we've seen amongst Black Americans in over 100 years, Yes, it makes sense that Georgia flipped blue. But 2024 will not be an easily explainable election. Contrary to what we saw in 2020, the polls are not on the side of President Biden. But a lot of things are. A lot of things are not only on the side of President Biden, but also at large, the Democratic Party. And this overperformance just simply cannot be ignored. To put this into perspective too, I think this tweet also summarizes exactly what I'm thinking about it too. Just stopping and thinking about how insane this special election that the Democrats spent just $25,000 on against a sitting state senator who spent close to a million dollars. Democrats did not invest in this race. Nobody was watching it. It was only on our radar tonight because Democrats overperformed so, so significantly. This narrowed up margin is something that cannot be ignored by the National Republican Party or the National Democratic Party. This is another one of those red flags, consistent with what we saw in New York in the 26th, in New York in the 3rd, that are telling us that this reality, 
the reality in which we are looking ahead full force into November. Democrats are going to perform better than are expected. And the numbers, the true numbers, the election results and the actual data tell us this. And it's something that both parties need to be aware of because nobody should be shocked this coming November if, despite losing in the polls, President Biden wins the election, Democrats maintain Senate control, Democrats win the House, because that could be a reality that Republicans aren't ready for and, quite frankly, Democrats aren't expecting. And while I don't think that this special election suggests that President Biden or Democrats have this election in the bag, it does suggest that they have a much higher chance of victory than people are otherwise suggesting. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2024 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.